So moving to the last part of this, uh, of this panel discussion, thriving post-COVID. And let me point the question back at, uh, at well, at Roland, Roland in this case, and I'll ask Mark as well. What has been your biggest aha moment during this crisis overall? Uh, like, I, like I mentioned, the, uh, the willingness of uh, prospects, not, not clients, to have a discussion on our company, uh, what we offer and uh, how they perceive us uh, and share with us uh, where they are going also and what, they, what changed for them. So um, we looked for a dialogue and we got a lot of dialogue. That was a, for us a really big aha moment. Um, yeah, because uh, I didn't count on uh, getting the time with them to uh, to discuss it, but they did. Yeah, and I mean, at the end, it's like it's often we are afraid of, of, of these things slipping away and uh, just asking mm -hmm. often gives us so much yeah. more. And uh, it's such a simple yeah, thing. And you get a reaction. The discussion was actually... Knowing. Sorry, Tom. Yeah, sorry, the discussion was, oh, the, the, I called them because uh, they were saying, yeah, well, we can't do it now, maybe summer, after summer, all the things I didn't want to hear. Um, but then I asked him, okay, so why? I mean, why? And then he said, well, good point. Uh, no, not, not many people ask me that, he said, but uh, let's uh, discuss. That was really, that was really good. And also after that, uh, uh, the, uh, the things uh, he shared uh, and they shared with three companies in total, um, yeah, I think it's a good basis for um, uh, a better relationship uh, potentially in the future. Very well. So keep that going forward, I would say. And Mark, what what has been your biggest aha moment during this crisis? Yeah, I mean, for for me, it's the remarkable resilience of of our you know of our companies and and our economy. Um, I, I would have thought that um, things would be in much much worse shape than they are, and you know, the big aha moment is just uh, actually how mature our internet oriented infrastructure actually is, right? It's even what we're doing right now, you know, and, and uh, while we did have some technical difficulties on this, uh, on this webinar, um, it's, uh, it, it is really remarkable how, uh, how well many companies are doing. That's been remarkable for me. Like I have, I have seven global coaching clients um, and they're all doing very well in many they're beating their numbers um, almost surprisingly you know they, they all number of them yeah. cut staff and and in prepare in preparation for um, a very difficult time and uh, as a result of you know the sales being ahead of expectations and having lower costs they're they're all you know many of them are profitable uh, today uh, and, and I think that's been surprising to to a lot of people, but also really, really exciting for those people that are in the the digital slash internet world. That said, there are a lot of people and companies that are hurting, the ones in the real world. And um, so I, I think I'm a little scared about uh, a growing divergence between you know haves and have nots, and the between the digital virtual people and the and the ones that are in the physical world and you know, question for me is what when when does the weakness in the in the you know real economy you know and in, in uh, everything from you know hotels to the the service sector to oil and gas uh, you know when when does that actually start to weigh on you know those of us in the technology industry which my, my guess is a lot of people listening to this uh, podcast are in the tech business and and are probably doing okay. Um, and uh, we'll, you know, we'll see. But for now, I'm, I'm impressed with the resilience that I'm uh, seeing out there. Okay. Um, Cindy, what, what has been your aha moment here? Uh, well, I think, I think every week um, I feel that there's an aha moment. So I think initially, you know, I didn't really anticipate how severe this was going to be and how fast it was going to move across the global economy. We had just returned actually from Mexico and um you know we we're just kind of relaxing and next thing we knew we were all social distancing so it moved very quickly so i think you know the aha moment right now has been more around um i think observing how everybody's handling the global pandemic crisis and you know i think mark you're right there are many many industries that are 
you know, going to be so, so severely impacted this morning. I was actually out walking very early because I'm very much practicing the importance of uh, health and being very mindful of that to our team. And we were talking about a manufacturing company here in Canada, you know, where they're still there, but the volumes are decreasing, you know, there's support from the government, they can last so long. So I think there's a number of industries that are going to be severely crushed and they might just not make it. And then we're talking about, you know, our makeup as a country and our GDP, where I think over 90% of our GDP is dependent on small businesses. And so many of them are obviously in the, um, you know, the restaurant and, and small retail, uh, uh, you know, mom and pop shops. So, you know, I think the, um, the, the faster everybody can move into e-commerce enablement, we're seeing that with Shopify. So I think my aha really is just watching the global economics. It's not local. And, you know, even when we have these conversations around, and, and Mark, your point, I really hit home in the sense of really, really focusing on the underserved segments. And, you know, so I think the aha is, is always goes back to focus, focus. What can you do differently in light of what you know? The past is the past and you need to move forward and see what emerges, test and then and re-vector quickly and be agile. Um, you know, I, I, I think there was agility certainly here before, but, you know, I'm just kind of constantly thinking um, on a daily basis about what else we could do. Uh, so that's a very different beat. And I, and I think maybe that's a healthy beat as well, you know, to t sort of, you know, have that shock uh, into your, your nervous system. And um, I think that deep reflection is, is also, you know, because I've been reading so much on mindfulness and, you know, how, you know, in terms of these kinds of dynamics, what really will win the day. And, you know, it kind of goes back to the, the hearts and the minds and the softer, uh, more and more emotional intelligence scene. Uh, if you're trying to just drive transaction after transaction, um, you know, I think there will be, uh, you know, some, there will be some issues. So I think it's heightening a lot of those points. Mm -hmm. Very good points. And you, you, you talked already about like uh, being mindful. Uh, question to you, Sachin, uh, based on what you've seen the last, last 10 weeks, what have you learned about mindset? Entrepreneurial mindset, customer mindset? So that's interesting. Um, you know, so I, uh, many, many years ago, did the Vipassana. So I did the 10 days of silence. Um, and I have ah. found myself uh, actually go back and start doing it in the mornings again. Um, I think, um, you know, for those of us that sort of saw this a little bit earlier, um, now it feels like you're in the norming process or the, I guess, the storming, norming, calming process, and we're entering the calming period, at least in our own minds. Uh, I think the variability that we see in the day is um, really quite wide. Um, you go from moments of, Are you still there? I think I've lost, we've lost uh, touching. So can you hear me? Something is going the wrong. Roland, can you hear me? Hope. I can, uh, I can. Can I look at oh, the right now? So when I look at the top of our, um, uh, top of our funnel, um, it's uh, it's incredible to see the amount of interest uh, and and to see that businesses. And I had a conversation with a Mumbai grocer about three weeks ago on one of our channels, and you know he said, "I'm trying to figure out how to deliver food to the neighborhoods that I have four stores in," um, or um, a mother in the Middle East who you know felt compelled to try and help other mothers with downloadable tutorials and wanted to build an app to do that. So I think we're seeing a lot of resilience and, and that, you know, is accelerating what we always knew was going to happen, which was that businesses would become omni-channel and digitally transformed. I just think we're seeing it at a pace uh, that we've just never experienced before. That's for sure. But uh, the, the market has been pushing for 10 years and now it happened in 10 weeks or even, even less than that. Yes. Yeah, exactly. So Roland, um, question to you. Um, where do you, from here, put your strategic priority? Where, where, are, where do you put your bets? 
Um, further, uh, <clears throat> further building on our uh, ecosystem. So we are building a a, a network of uh, partners uh, throughout uh, uh, Europe and uh, in the US, North North America. Uh, that's going to be important for us. Besides the things that we were doing, is uh, that is uh, the one of the things that we picked up in uh, over the past weeks. Like I said, uh, we've been testing it for six weeks, and it looks uh, looks to work. Uh, so, so, why so, that, uh, the, why do you believe that the ecosystem, growing the ecosystem, is important to um, to the next phase? Well, it is because uh, for uh, credibility, um, having more advocates. Uh, 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 not just us uh, preaching, but uh, but there's more people uh, 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 being uh, positive about uh, what we have to offer, uh, and also getting if so the market will get different perspectives on our products, and also uh, looking at the different angles, driving uh, uh, solutions. So I think that's yeah. good for the product because it will um, the more influences, the more. Um, uh, diversity we get in our messaging. Uh, I mean, still loyal to what we have to offer, of course. But I mean, uh, uh, let's uh, see how uh, how creative we can get. And uh, creativity exactly. from more minds uh, is, uh, I, I believe in that. So, if we build that momentum with more uh, with more uh, creative minds, I'm all for it. I'm all for that as well. So, last question, and I see that we're also almost at the top of the hour. So, see how um, how quickly we can get one or two more in. Mark, back to you. Um, what do you believe that we need to do different to be remarkable in this new situation? So let customers start talking about us. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I think what we need to do is we need to build processes in our companies for for generating remarkability. I mean, I think it's, I think that, uh, um, uh, you know, a lot of these processes that are a lot of things that, you know, we, we, we try to come up with um, you know very creative solutions. It's sometimes people just depend on someone who's creative in, in the uh, in the office. I think it's better to have an actual process around coming up with uh, ideas that are unique. I know that in Fluidive we have a concept called the X factor, and that is that any anything that we do to go to market has to have something remarkable about it. It has to have something that's going to get people to talk. Something different. Um, so that's that's a process. So people know not to come to me with any proposals to do anything unless it's got something that you know is going to have a, a something intriguing in it. Um, so I think we need to have that process, and then include your customers in that. Right? Ask your customers for ideas and really loop them into that into the process. You know, a number of our, our customers at Influitive actually invite uh, their customers in for hackathons and for messaging um, events and um, that, that sort of thing. Um, because a lot of times, some of the most remarkable ideas are gonna come outside of your four walls and you need to let your customers in and uh, get them to come up with some of the most intriguing ideas. <laughs> exactly. I completely uh, agree with that, applause for that as well. So, yeah, I mean, I, I think we are at the top of the hour and I wanna respect everybody's time. So key takeaways for me, um, a couple of them. I think you just highlighted this, that um, doing well, kind of growing and being relevant post COVID is all about hitting the right nerve, surprising the right way in a positive way, um, which is about building remarkability inside your, uh, inside your organization, make it a process. I mean, it's exactly also why I wrote my book, The Remarkable Effect. Um, I think, well, the future at the end is, and I, 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 pre I preach for software companies, but it's much broader than that, is uh, that organizations that have products that are worth making remarkable about, yeah, they, uh, they, will, uh, they will thrive in the future. Because that's what the world at the end is looking for. It would make the world a far better place. Um, another thing that I've highlighted and, and noted from, this, uh, from, the, from everything that you answered here is, to be much more specific about who you're for and who you're not for. I mean, Mark, you talked about uh, the right customer segment, uh, the underserved customer segment, and it doesn't have to be a different segment or an audience that you're not touching upon yet, but make it much more specific, and uh, then you'll see that you will start to resonate in a far better way, kind of ad addressing their underserved uh, uh, niches. A couple of things from um, 
that I also wrote down, uh, it, I mean, advocacy, having advocates as customers is definitely a long-term game. If you're in there for the short term, it will not work. Customers will see through that. Uh, product is, of course, extremely important. It, st it starts with that. And I think there is much more to, to say, but uh, thank you all for, uh, yeah, for, for your very inspiring insights and uh, experiences and anecdotes from what you've been working on. Um, top of the hour right now, I want to kind of make a, a quick plug for the, the webinar, the panel from next week. This is a panel whereby we are going to focus on it's all about viability, like sustaining your business and actually making sure that you will uh, yeah, come out stronger right now. Again, four uh, remarkable leaders. One from Norway, Patrick Berglund. Uh, he's from a company called Xenetta. Um, we have Cindy back again, Sales Choice. Uh, we have Dagmar Schuler, who is in the, um, in the uh, emotional intelligence space um, and, and yeah, uh, creating transformation in that area. And we have another uh, person that is in the uh, emotional intelligence area which is called Polzak from Immersion. So join that uh, session again, it's at the same time. You can find the link um, uh, online on the websites that you've, uh, where you found this one as well. And uh, Malay will likely uh, send. Sorry? Thanks. Okay. Uh, I thought something happened. Thanks, John, that, that was uh, fantastic. And thanks to, to all our audience uh, members as well as panelists for uh, sticking around and uh, absorbing the conversation and, and all the rich insights. I would also like to um, propose uh, anyone who is interested in looking back at this discussion, we will have a recording uploaded on our, our website at the AI Predictive World Forum, and you can visit it at saleschoice.com slash resources. Um, and over there, you'll not only find the webinars, but also a lot of podcasts, um, white papers, blogs, including recordings from the webinar last week that had focused more on delivering value to thrive in the post-COVID era. Uh, it's it's a great resource uh, if you want to learn more about AI, more about sales, more about the industry in general and the direction which it's going. A, a lot of great content for you to learn from. And before we all say goodbye, I would like to quickly thank not only uh, John and our panelists, Mark, Sachin and Roland and Cindy. I would also like to thank our sponsors, Tata, the Canadian Advanced Technology Alliance, other than Value Inspiration, IT World Canada, and the Bedford Consulting Group slash TransSearch. So thank you all for all your support and thanks to everyone in the audience for sticking by. We hope to see you next week. You will shortly be receiving an email with a link to register for that webinar. So keep on the lookout for that one. Have a great day, everyone, and stay safe. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.